Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me. Praise his holy and righteous name. To God be the glory for the things that he has done and what he is going to do on earth as it is in heaven. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Father God, in the great and mighty, matchless name of Jesus, I thank you that you have anointed me so that out of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are acceptable in your sight. Christ in me, the hope of glory. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer, and out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water by the power of the Holy Spirit, covered in the blood of Jesus and under the authority of the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we thank God that we are still on the encouragement and empowering women in ministry. And our women to keep silent in the church. This is what we have been dissecting and trying to discover what the Apostle Paul actually meant when he was going to and fro uh, from the Galatians, the Ephesians, and Philippians, and the Colossians, First uh, and Second Corinthians, Timothy, and up and down as they gave this word to him. During the last teaching, I presented facts of Paul, what he meant, and who he was talking to when he said, let the women keep silent, etc., in reflection to 1 Corinthians 14, 33-35, New King James Translation. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. 34 verse, let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn, let them ask their own husbands at home. For it is shameful for women to speak in church. The devil is a lie. To study this passage of scripture in its fullness, we must use the four practical keys to interpret this scripture. Who is Paul speaking to? What are the specific issues relating to a specific church or group of people? What type of message is being conveyed? Is it a promise, a commandment, a doctrine, an exaltation, a prophetic message, a regulation of a specific group, or to the whole church? We need to keep these keys in mind, otherwise we will get into traditional interpretations, some of which are not correct. Remember we said last week, the word of God is true, but the translation is not always true. 2 Timothy 2, 14-16, New King James. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words or no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. As we continue to search the scriptures, we find many examples of who had a voice and obeyed the commands of God through the power of the Holy Spirit directing them to carry out. 
This power gave them the boldness not to obey the instructions of men. The Hebrew midwives in Exodus 1, 51 were commanded to kill the newborn babes. They did not obey the king of Egypt, rather feared the Lord more. Verses 20 and 21 said, God blessed these women and built houses for them. Exodus 2, 1-3 Jehoshaphat Je This is Moses' mother. Hid him against Pharaoh's decree. Abigail, 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter, where she fed David and his men behind her husband Nabal's back when he refused to extend hospitality. Abigail preserves the shepherds of their business and all their goods. Nabal dies 10 days later and Abigail becomes the wife of David. The Lord was pleased with Abigail's decision. Esther, in Esther 4, 11 through 16, New King James, Translation, all the king's servants and the people of the king's providences know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one in whom the king holds out his golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these thirty days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than any of the other Jews. For if you obtain complete silence at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan, and fast for me. Neither eat or drink for three days and three nights. And that's called, now they call that the Feast of Purim. The Fast of Purim. My maids and I will fast likewise. And I will go to the king which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther 5.2 says, God gave her favor and she preserved a nation. So we all know the story of how she defeated that Haman and he had planned for Mordecai to um, be hung on, on the gallows that he was building and the gallows that, that Haman built for Mordecai, he built for himself because Esther refused to obey the laws of man but relied on God making a way out of no way. Rahab, Joshua 2, 3, New King James Translation. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search all the country. She hid the spies. She defied what this uh, king of Jericho said to her. Verse 4. God preserved this woman and her family. With that being said, we see that women had strong voices in, in, in the old throughout the Old Testament, regardless of traditional teachings. However, concerning 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 35, we need to examine it more closely after we study the following points. And these points are both men and women were used vocally in the churches. 
So we cannot say that, that the women kept silent. Acts 1.14, Mary and other women were praying with the men in the upper room. So when the day of Pentecost came and the fire fell, it fell on all. Not just only on the men, but it fell on the women also. Acts 2, 4. And they filled, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues, including women. So what was given to the men also was given to the, the women. Acts 2, 17. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Where do they prophesy if not in church? They had already done this on the day of Pentecost. 1 Corinthians 11.5 But every woman who prays or prophesies, Paul does not indicate that a woman should not pray or prophesy in the church. Acts 21.9 Four daughters did prophesy. Titus 2.3 Teachers of good things in general talking about the women. In Titus 2, 4, Paul tells older women to teach the younger women some specific things to be sober, to love their husbands, and to love their children. Paul had to give these instructions because of the background of these Christians. Titus was a pastor on the Isle of Crete. The Gentile people that lived there were very rough and tough people. They were unruly people, given to drinking and fighting. Yes, both men and women were riotous brawlers. Historians tell us that Timothy tried to pass these women at first, to pass these people at first, but the women of the town threw him outside the city. So Titus, who was a bit tougher, takes on the task of pastoring this group of people. And so we can see not only were the men riders, but the women riders, they was keeping silent and they wouldn't have been able to throw Timothy out the, uh, the city. John 20, 16 through 18. Jesus tells Mary to tell the disciples he is risen. The men were hiding in the upper room, the first meeting place. Matthew 28.10, New King James Translation. Now after the Sabbath, and as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the, an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly, from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell the brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. So not only did Jesus tell the, the, uh, the women to go and give the message? The angel also gave them the, uh, the command to go and tell. Hallelujah. Luke 24, 22, New King James Translation. Yes, 
and a certain woman of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. How did these women communicate if they didn't talk and use their mouths? Prayer without ceasing was made for Peter, who was in prison in Acts 12, 1 through 6, New King James translation. Both men and women. Uh, so by prayer, were, were men and women both were praying for Peter. It was Mary's house and Rhoda answered the door. So women had to be present. In verse 12, how, how is it that we find so many examples in the Old Testament where women were not silent in the temple or in the congregation of the Hebrews, and yet we now under a we are now under a better covenant, and we think women are to be silent in the church. Psalm sixty-eight, eleven, New King James Translation. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. The word company here is in the feminine form of the Hebrew word. The injunction, praise the Lord, occurs 100 times in the Psalms alone. This praise in speech and in song is addressed to both men and women Israelites, and many times is in reference to the tabernacle or the house of the Lord. So that meant they were praising women and men were praising in the house of the Lord or in the tabernacle. First Chronicles 25, 6, New King James translation. All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord with cymbals, string instruments, and harps for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jadu, Jadudith and Heman were under the authority of the king. The daughters of Heman sang and played instruments in the house of the Lord. So we saw that they were permitted by their father. They didn't have to keep silent, but they was on a choir. Hallelujah. First Samuel 2, 1 through 10. New King James translation, Hannah prayed and prophesied in the temple. We know the story of Hannah, where Eli thought she was drinking, and come to find out that she was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that she was interceding for the request that she had made present. Hallelujah. She made her request known unto God, hey, and he heard her cry. Miriam sang and danced in the midst of the congregation that came out of Egypt in Exodus 15:20. Deborah taught, judged, prophesied, and sang in the midst of the congregation. Now that we have clearly discovered that women were not silent in the house of God in the Old Testament or in the house churches in the New Testament, we can begin to look at first. Corinthians 14, 33-35 more closely. Then we can bear these things in mind. Paul could not contradict himself. You cannot pull one scripture out from its setting and try to make a doctrine out of it. You must look at all the scriptures on that given subject. Anyone can pull a scripture out of its setting and try to make it say something that it is not really saying. Hallelujah. In the early time, Corinth was celebrated for the great wealth of its temple dedicated to Venus, which had gained its riches by supplying Corinth's merchants with prostitutes under the forms of religion. The voice, the vices of the Greeks were notorious in the Roman Empire, but the Corinthians' vices were notorious even in Greece. 
The bad reputation of the city had become proverbial and to Corinthianize had come to me to play the wantum. Paul's visit to Corinth was a long one. He stayed in Corpus, the ruler of the synagogue. He stayed with Cyprus, the ruler of the synagogue, who said with his family, who with his family became Christians. So he led them to the Lord by him staying there. Hallelujah. Later, when Paul was at Ephesus, he wrote to the, to the Christians at Corinth. Cleo, a Christian, and her household had come to Ephesus to, and had told Paul about the errors that were creeping into Corinthian church. Paul had who received letters from the elders asking his advice and questioning him on certain matters relating to Christian living and church life. Paul probably wrote 1 Corinthians in the spring of AD 57, three years after he had left Corinth. In the meantime, the Juda Judaizing party was causing divisions in the Gnosticism, and Gnosticism was seeking the unities with Christianity, seeking to unite with Christianity, attempting to reestablish the aristocracy of knowledge in religion, and thus contradicting Christian teaching. So Paul is responding back to a previous letter that they had written him. Look at 1 Corinthians 7, 1, King James, New King James. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, this is Paul responding. In the early church, there were this Judaizing party and they were agitating and trying to bring a certain Jewish rites upon the Gentile churches. These Jewish rites were not all from the Mosaic law. Some of these were from the Mason, the, Mish, the Mishnah, or Rabbinic law. They were also known as the oral law of the Jews. Jesus dealt with this concerning eating and drinking on a Sabbath. Moses supposedly gave the Mishnah up to Joshua. And these were the oral laws. Jesus never broke the law of God. Matthew 12, 8, New King James Translation. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. He broke rabbinical laws. Paul got swept up with this problem in Galatians 2, 11 through 14. Paul dealt with this problem in the Galatian churches. Galatians 1, 6 through 9, New King James Translation. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who you call to be the grace of Christ in a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, that what you, we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, and so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. This is Acts 5, 1, 2, 19, 20, 23, and 24. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 34 through 36 was simply reading back their question to him. He already stated that all in the Corinthian church could prophesy, which included women. 
1 Corinthians 14.31, New King James Translation. For you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. The Greek, the original Greek text was not punctuated and the translators inserted the question marks at the end of verse 36 but not at the end of verse 34 and 5 as they should have. When we read verse 34, let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak but to be under obedience as also saith the law. Paul is quoting their their question. There is no law in the word of God that forbids a woman to speak in church. We cannot find any law in the Old Testament or new saying such a thing. Verse 35, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. How could these women ask their husbands questions at home if they were, were not saved? If the husbands were not saved, they didn't have nothing to give them the, the truth or the word or the gospel or anything. 1 Corinthians 2.14, New King James Translation. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if the husband are not saved, they can't give them anything. They don't have nothing of substance. So that right there was the lie of the enemy. The expression, as also saith the law, refers to the oral law of the Jews. What if a woman wasn't married? Then who's she going to go to? What if she was widowed? Her husband did. What if her husband was in jail or lived on the sea? Nothing of this precept exists in the Old Testament that women had to be silent or go and ask their husbands be learned by them. When Christ died, the, the veil was split in the temple and all these old rabbinical laws and things, we are under grace and no longer under the law. But we keep picking up that part that, that says to stifle women to bring the gospel, to stifle women to teach and train, whether it's a male or female, the Holy Spirit does not have a skirt or a pair of pants on it. So we find that nothing of any of that was in the Old Testament. The pro prohibition against women Speaking in the synagogue was a prohibition by the rabbinical traditions. So we're not bringing that into under Christ, the new covenant. We're not bringing these um, synagogue, these things, the rules, and regulations, or the rabbinical traditions from the synagogue. In the synagogue, women were excluded, not from teaching, but also from learning. And there's a movie out that Barbara Streisand played called Yentl. And it explains all about that in, in the how women were not supposed to study. And they were not even trained to look or a, 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 they were forbidden to even look at any of the sacred uh, Talmud or any of the, 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 uh, the sacred books of the um, Hebrews or the Jews. But this Yentl had a desire so much that she dressed up like a man that she could study the word in in the um, Talmud. And so that's a good movie and a good example of this. Also, another movie I saw is called Loving Leah. That's also a good example of the Jewish and the Messianic, of, of the Jewish, uh, not Messianic, the Jewish and the rabbinical um, laws and traditions, uh, wherein her 
this man's brother was a rabbi. He passed away, mm -hmm. and so the um, law was that he should marry his sister-in-law to make uh, his brother's name be effective. Excuse me, I've lost my... There we are. <laughs> so, that is also an excellent movie to give you an example. It's lightweight. To give you an example of the traditions and the things that the women had to go through. Note, in John 11, Mary and Martha called Jesus rabbi, which means teacher. So if he was a rabbi and he was teaching them, he was teaching Mary and Martha. That's why he, they called him teacher. The Apostle Paul never quoted these traditions as a constituting authority. Paul warns against heeding this kind of commandment in Titus 1.14, King James Version. Now giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So he's saying... We, the, the veil was split in the temple. Christ paid it all. We are no longer under the law. We are under grace. But we find out that in the Old Testament, women were not forbidden to speak except for in the synagogues where the Jewish um, laws were still being practiced. 1 Corinthians 14, 34, 35. Paul is quoting the words of the judiciarizers in Corinth, who were teaching that women must be silent in the church because of Jewish rabbinical laws. We are under grace. We are not under the law. That is why Paul says in verse 36, What? Came the word of God out of you? Or came it unto you only? What is the thundering word of that is why Paul says in 30, verse 36, okay, a what is a thundering word in the Greek? Came the word of God out of you. Did God speak to you personally and command you to write it down and proclaim it like Moses did? Or came it unto you only? In other words, are you the only person who got this special information from God and nobody else knows about it? Was it a new commandment? No. 1 Corinthians 14.37, King James Version, If any man, notice, don't say a woman, think himself to be a prophet like duty as I claim to be, or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord, and not some so-called law instituted by man adding to the scriptures of which we have never heard or seen before. And he already told them about prophesying. He already told them that all could prophesy. So why is he going to turn around after he done said that? Turn around and say, uh, let the women keep silent. When he said everybody should prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14, 38, King James. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. It also means not to understand. So if you don't understand, you continue to be it because you're not trying to go by what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Men out there that don't want to release women into ministry or don't want to help, like Paul say, to help these women that labor with him, that these women labor, hallelujah, in the ministry. In verse 37, 39 says, Wherefore, brethren, covet not to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. This was read to the whole church, both male and female. Don't forbid to speak in tongues. Don't forbid to prophesy. That means everyone 
that the Spirit will use. Hallelujah. And verse 40 says that all things be done in decency and in order. So we got to take our feet off of these women, men of God, that your ministry will grow, that you will be blessed. You might have mega ministries, but you look around and you can see that it's the women, hallelujah, is building uh, the kingdom of God in these ministries, hallelujah. And they are the one that's getting the word out. They're getting, the, they don't mind pounding the payment with tracks. They don't mind uh, doing street ministry. They don't mind going into the hospitals. We had got some restrictions down because of the pandemic. But they don't mind going to the hospitals and the nursing homes, laying hands on the sick, hallelujah, and praying for them and seeing the miraculous anointing and power of God. Where are the men? They're not uh, uh, conscious of all the things that the women do during the day while they're at work. Most of them have jobs. But they should take some time to look at the great works, hallelujah, and the great anointing of the fruit of the spirit of, uh, produced with the operation of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit through women. Hallelujah. And the, they were all in the upper room in one accord. And no one that was in there got left out. God overshadowed all of them. The Holy Spirit set upon all of them. Hallelujah. They begin to speak in tongues. Some recognized their own languages and some did not. And some spoke in foreign language. They had drunk in the Holy Ghost and power. That when they came out, the people were marveled at what was going on. And then it was recorded and said what happened in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. So if you don't believe it, that God called a woman to preach, sister or brother. Read your word, study your word, because this is it. And we're not finished with it yet, because we believe that God got more to say on this subject, because we grieve the heart of God. When we do not let the Holy Spirit use us, because it's the Holy Spirit to shed the love of God from heart to heart and breast to breast. It don't say that only men have the, the anointing or the holy power or whatever. It says that after the Holy Ghost come, that you shall have power. And that means everybody that received the Holy Spirit, that received the fire baptism. Oh, uh, Jeremiah says like fire shut up in his bones. Hallelujah. And it's not only to him, but it's women with fire that shut up in their bones. They got a word to say. They got a life speaking word. But you pastor sitting on these women or you prophets or whoever you call yourself are sitting on these women release these women into the gospel hallelujah release them to do with the word of god they want to be working in the kingdom and obeying the holy spirit to give them the anointing to do those things now we can see hallelujah that so many women have already been able to get out there and do a great work. Hallelujah. But we, as those that are sitting on them, they need to release them in the name of Jesus. And women, if you sitting in the ministry, it's not allowing you to use your gifts. I command you right now to obey God. I advise you to obey God. It's better to obey God than to obey man. If God have called you to preach, if you just got to preach in your bedroom or preach in your living room until God open the doors for you, but be obedient to what God will have you to do and he will bless you. Look at those midwives in the, in the Old Testament. They was obedient and they feared the Lord not to kill those babies that Pharaoh had commanded them to kill. But they would rather put their life on the line that Pharaoh might kill them. But they feared the Lord and they obeyed God. Hallelujah. Even Esther, she was... Um, in a precarious position where she could have left, lost her life if the king had not extended his 
receptive to her, but he had the love of God. Hallelujah. That he released her from that law by extending his sepulcher. And brothers out there, I'm telling you, you need to extend your sepulcher. You need to put out some some a uh, word to some women. And you need to get out the anointed oil and have the presbytery to lay hands on these women and release them in the mighty power of God. Hallelujah. God will bless you for it. Hallelujah. Because you're being obedient to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You are being obedient to the great commission that it says to go into the highways and hedges and the byways. Hallelujah. And compel them to come. And so that's what some of the women, they got the boldness to get out there. Hallelujah. And to preach and teach the gospel and share the love of God with people. So this is what we got to pick up the slack, brothers and sisters. And hew to the line. Oh, we don't have to be jealous of nobody. Hallelujah. Because our reward is going to be eternal life. Hallelujah. With Christ Jesus. So we thank you right now. And those we want to say that may hear this and don't know him in a pardon of your sins. I advise you to seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is yet near. Oh, then those that have one foot in the church and one foot in the world, make up your mind. Release uh, uh, what the enemy has given to you. Then uh, you will look to the hills will come if you'll help uh, because your help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It's time, it's time, and time is winding up. So we got to seek him in a part of our sins. We got to believe on him as the scripture has said. And out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus for all those, hallelujah, that are out there backslidden, Lord. Your word says... In Jeremiah 3 and 22, did you will heal their black slidings, Lord. And you, Lord, said if we love you, that we should keep your commandments, Father. Oh, Father, be mercy to them that are unrighteous in their sins and their lawless deeds, Father. If they repent, we thank you. Did you say that we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of the sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Oh, Father, Heavenly Father, your word says that if we confess, you will forgive us. So we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, and we ask you to cleanse those that are in backslidden conditions, Lord. One by one, and name I name them, Lord. Turn a search light on them, Father. Let them see the error of their ways. Oh, Father, let them know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life everlasting. Oh, Father, put right desires in their hearts. Restore their sensitivity to sin as you see it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, send revival in the land, Father. Draw those that are yours, Father, back into your king, Father, kingdom, Lord, and baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. We look to you who is the author and finish of our faith. If you, oh, Father, hallelujah, can give good gifts to your children, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you that you can give the Holy Holy Spirit to them that will ask for it. Um, stir their hearts, Lord. Let them be hungry and thirst after righteousness, Lord. Um, oh, that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in unknown tongues as the Spirit give them utterance, Lord. Um, oh, Father Jesus, um, we you promise to give the Holy Spirit uh, to all those that ask. Uh, you say that we shall be filled with the Spirit. And so, Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your Spirit. And we ask now that you baptize those in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues that need it, Lord. 
I pray that rivers of living water will flow from them in the name of Jesus. We believe we receive this baptism by faith now in Jesus' name. Speaking in tongues is verbal. So we need to speak aloud. Start verbally praising the Lord in English. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then start yielding your tongue, hallelujah, to whatever words that will come out your mouth. Keep doing this until you hear the heavenly language come forth. Do not be discouraged. Believe you have received and keep trying until it happens that the Holy Ghost will fall upon you. Honda Yamakonda Rabasia, that you got a little Rabasito Tora de Yamasa will be able to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. You were speaking a heavenly language that the enemy don't know what you were saying, and that gift of tongues come for you to war in the spirit. Those gift of tongues come. Come for you to be able to speak mysteries. Hallelujah. And it's the tongue of angels. Oh, Father, we thank you, God, for your gifts. Hallelujah. We thank you for the manifestation, Lord God. Oh, Father, we ask you to remember bereaved people tonight. Those are the depressed. Those are the bereaved, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I know you were able to restore them by, by the power of God. Hallelujah. That you came to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wing, wounds, Lord. And you, God, to give beautiful ashes, the oil of joyful mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So, Father, we reach out to you tonight. And we tell you, Lord, to give your grace and mercy on those, God. Hallelujah. And heal them from all any thing and it's not like you got uprooted in the name of Jesus uproot the addictions Lord and the habits that are not godly or unrighteousness Lord in the name of Jesus cleanse Lord from any demonic activity Father we believe you that you heal the broken hearted God you heal those Lord that has been under curses and under disease, God, under sickness, Father, uprooted in the name of Jesus. And we boldly ask for your grace and mercy at this time of need. We say that whosoever, you said in your word, that whosoever asks, receives. Lord, we ask for grace and mercy and that you meet financial need, Lord, in this time, God. Oh, Father, in this time of recession, Lord God, we ask you, God, to meet every need, Lord, financially, mentally, emotionally, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would teach us how to prosper and help us to seek your kingdom and receive everything that we need in Jesus Christ, Father. So we thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for healing, God, tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you bore our grief and sufferings and our sorrows, and that your wounds have healed our sickness and disease. We know that nothing is too hard for you, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we are praying and believing now for complete healing and restoration of all the days of sickness, crying out for, for relief, Father, crying out for healing, Lord. Those that look into you, God, thank you, Lord, that you have sent your word and healed us and cleansed us in all unrighteousness. Thank you that you took the stripes upon your back for our healing. Oh, Father, we thank you that the kingdom is yours, God, in the name of Jesus. Then you, God, will give us the kingdom, Lord, if we seek your face, Father. Oh, Father, that you came to destroy the works of the devil. Thank you, Lord, that you have always caused us to triumph and overcome in the name of Jesus. So we come against every work of the enemy and command the enemy to leave every situation in our lives. We declare that we are free from every evil word that's been spoken by the blood of Jesus uh, and every weapon, every dart that's been thrown our way. Uh, 
Lord, we thank you that you are dismantling it and rendering it powerless. Um, Heavenly Father, we pray that your will and peace be established in every situation in our lives and that there will be peace on earth, Lord, hallelujah, and that it will begin with us, Lord, hallelujah, that you will uproot, tear down, and reestablish the things and family problems, the fear, God, all from the financial deficits, the unemployment, Lord, all God, those that are seeking and praying for a spouse, Lord, we ask you to release the anointing, Lord God, for love, true love, true love, Father, hallelujah, between one man and one woman, Lord, and we thank you, God, for your wisdom and your guidance, Lord, Lord, we say that if you, that we lack knowledge, we can ask you, God, and you will give it to us freely. We ask for your wisdom and guidance in our life. We ask that you will render your will to us and help us to hear your voice in all things. So, Father, we order our steps and making them sure in the name of Jesus. And may the favor, hallelujah, of the Lord come upon you. May the peace of God rest on you. May the power of the Holy Spirit overshadow you. May you rise up to be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. May you receive the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth, and the fullness of the land. May the Lord bless everything you put your hands to do, and may every place you walk may be filled with the blessings of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one to the other. In the name of Jesus, this is our prayer and for our program for this evening. And we thank you for listening. We thank you that you will grab hold of something. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good night.